Hey everybody, John Skiba here. Uh, just got out of court uh, fighting one of these debt buyers. I was actually fighting Unifund in this. I had a trial today, which is something I don't have a, a lot of these days. You know, I've almost broken my career up into before COVID and after COVID. Uh, before COVID, we were in court like every day, it felt like doing some kind of hearing or doing trials. Done a lot of trials, done about 400 trials total. But this was in the Superior Court here in Arizona, uh, fighting Unifund, uh, downtown Phoenix. It's, like I said, it's, I bet it's been a couple years uh, just because everything has moved online with Zoom and the way that they handle things in the court system here in, in Arizona post-COVID. So, uh, but actually being in the courtroom again, it was actually pretty awesome. Uh, it brought me back to uh, memories. It's actually the same courthouse that I worked at it when I was a prosecutor here for Maricopa County. I did criminal prosecution early on in my career, which if there's any lawyers out there who are young in their career, highly recommend that as a career path uh, to spend some time with a district attorney or county attorney. You get a ton of trial experience that other attorneys just don't have. So, uh, but this case with Unifund today, it's actually a case that's been pending for over a year. And that's one thing I tell people who are getting sued by debt buyers and debt collectors, the, the wheels of justice move very slowly in civil cases. Uh, over a year, this thing has been pending. <clears throat> We've been fighting it. We, you know, They filed a motion for summary judgment. We won. In Arizona, they require you to go uh, through this compulsory arbitration process. We won there. And even then, the debt buyer, they wouldn't settle, you know, and it's a relatively minor case. You know, it wasn't a giant case. I mean, it's over $10,000 because it's in the uh, in the Superior Court here in Arizona. But it's one of these things where uh, we've been fighting it for over a year, won at all these levels, and we even offered yesterday some last minute settlement proposals. And, you know, they just shot us down. They came back with like these 90% offers on a junk debt buyer case where the account had been changed hands multiple times. And so, uh, it's one of these things where like, we're like, fine, I guess we'll do the trial. And I knew this case had a lot of problems with it for the plaintiff. But you know what? They, I, I can tell you how a lot of these debt collection uh, debt buyer people are. A lot of times they're not used to parties pressing back. You know, I've talked about at length, 95% of cases end in a default judgment because people don't contest it. And that, that isn't to say that every case you go to trial, like I said, I these days I don't do a lot of trials because we can get decent settlements. And if there's a reasonable settlement, then I'll tell my client to take it. But this one, they took it to trial. They got there. They only had a witness from the debt buyer, from Unifund. This account had changed hands purportedly like four times. And they, the, the thing that really stuck out for the judge is they didn't have anybody from the original creditor to at least authenticate or do what we call lay foundation for the documents uh, that they were submitting. And so, you know, in this case, they had three exhibits and I objected to those exhibits. Two of them, the court kept out. And so it really just left the debt buyer with almost no evidence. Uh, and, and, and in fact, what ended up happening, even at the end of them presenting their case, I moved for what's called a directed verdict. Uh, sometimes it's called judgment uh, as a matter of law. It's Rule 50 in this Rules of Civil Procedure in most jurisdictions. And essentially what, what a directed verdict is, it's, it's you saying, look, judge, they put on their case. They have provided so little evidence to support a judgment in their favor that you, I shouldn't even have to put on my case, just grant judgment. So I moved for a directed verdict after they had had their witness and uh, judge granted it. The uh, motion was granted. That means judgment is entered in favor of my client. And now they've given us an opportunity to file a motion to request attorney's fees and court costs. So um, not only now is the debt buyer not going to collect on that, but they're going to end up writing my client a check. So uh, good victory today. Uh, like I said, it goes to show that if you press these things, there are some defenses to them. However, like I said, not all cases need to go to trial. Not all cases should go to trial. Uh, particularly original creditor cases, but these debt buyer cases, and especially if you have a case where they've changed hands multiple times, uh, that's the kind of case where they're going to have some serious problems. Um, you just got to kind of hold their feet to the fire a bit. You know, that they will often say, uh, and it was said today in the courtroom, you look, this is how these debt buyers do business. It happens every day like this. And that may be the case, but that doesn't mean that 
you know, that, that's, we're not, we're, we're in a court of law. We're, we're here doing procedural, you know, there's rules that have to be followed, rules of evidence, rules of civil procedure. And if you don't have someone who can authenticate and be able to testify from a place of knowledge about certain documents, the court shouldn't let them in. And they didn't let them in today. And that allowed us to have a victory. So we did it. Had a good one. It's good to be back in the courtroom again. Uh, again, check out my information. I have a ton of videos if you're dealing with a debt collection lawsuit. If you're in Arizona, I'm happy to help you. Check my information out below. We have a lot of things that can help you out. We'll talk to you guys later.